Hello, everyone. Would it take some time to wait for others? All right, just making sure I'm here. Looks like I am. So we're gonna wait, we're gonna wait for folks to come in. And sorry for the echo. All right, let's give folks five minutes. So I actually do not have YouTube up and running. So I'm not sure. Uh, so when you're writing comments, I will look at the comments after I go through the slides. All right, so we are going to begin and uh, just give me one moment. So our presentation is no hype intro to chat GPT. Before we begin, I'll do an official introduction of myself. My name is Portia. I'm the founder of documentwrite.dev. I actually used to be a software developer at the Atlantic Magazine and Protocol Labs. And before that, I actually started my career in ESL I lived in China and I was an educator for, for about five or six years. And right now I am based in Raleigh. I travel and live all over the place. So these days I am in the States. Before I was living in Portland, DC, Berlin, Beijing, but now in um, the great state of North Carolina. So before we begin, I'd like to talk about Document Right. So Document Right is the company that I founded. We've been around for four years, and some of the services we uh, inc we offer include conduct documentation audits. We do user interviews and UX research, and we set up documentation best practices. The reason why I created Document Right because as a software developer. I would make and create the software, but it didn't. they didn't seem like they had a process. The companies um, that my friends worked at, where I worked at, they didn't seem to have a process to um, explain what the code was doing. And I know for me, when I was a software developer, many of the technologies that I adopted was because of the technical documentation. So um, I'm actually going to name some names, but technologies like Netlify, like I use Netlify or Vizelle uh, for projects. And after a while, I actually paid for these, um, the software because I was able to use the, use the documentation. And a documentation is a form of 
content marketing. I've also read documentation where it seemed like it was not connecting or not privy to the user's end goal. There's a lot of great software out there. And the reason why document right exists is so that people understand that your software exists and how it solves their problem. So if you're interested in upgrading, writing, doing user research for your documentation, you can always contact us. And without further ado, what will we cover the no hype chat GPT? It's interesting that I'm doing this presentation. And the one thing I will tell you is this is not unbiased. I'm not going to give you two equal sides. I have to say that I love ChatGPT. As a developer, I've wanted a tool like this for quite a while. Like I, at best, am a very average programmer. And some of the mistakes that I've made in the past, I would have been able to easily um, troubleshoot and fix. One problem I've had with chat, I was doing um, financial forecast and I know how to do financial forecast using pandas, but that would have taken me about at least two hours or so. I was able to use chat GPT, put in the numbers and do a financial forecast that took me about no more than two minutes. So that's my personal testimony, but getting back to what we'll cover today, we're going to go over, um, let's see if we can well, we'll skip introductions because I actually can't see the YouTube uh, chat box. So we're going to go over innovation, proper mindset, chat GPT for starters, uh, starters for technical writers, useful chat GPT prompts, some of the limitations, and then we'll have a Q&A session. Our concern for technology and its implications to society is not new. It's almost the definition of being human. And if you read Jason Pfeiffer's book, Build for Tomorrow, he has tons of examples of technology out there that makes uh, pundits, parents, government just really skeptical about the harm that it could cause. And some of these examples of past concern of new technologies, about 70 years ago, Cities such as Chicago, Los Angeles, New York, they waged a war against pinball. Yes, that little pinball machine where you see every, you have a little silver ball and the lights are up when you actually hit it. That was considered um, a device that ruined the prospects of children and actually and caused crime. It was a big deal and it goes to show you that uh, when we have these new technologies, the first thing that we do is we do worry about, well, how will it affect the youth? Or number two, the second one. Live musicians were terrified that the photograph would make them obsolete. They were afraid that recorded music would take the soul and expression out of humans. I don't know where we heard that before, where the technology would make humans less human, but this is some this is something that people were writing about in 1920s. I think it was before 1920s. It's like around the turn of the last century. Radio stations were considered evil. And that term, live musician, was based on this technology, the phonograph. So you had musicians that were afraid that people would stop listening to music, to, to music live in a theater and they would just go and listen to music on a phonograph or later a radio and so that was kind of so that was advertising for them that this is live as opposed to coming from like a box or a machine and a concern that's a little uh, more recent theater movie theaters oppose a, a vhs so um gosh i haven't mentioned vhs in such a long time but it's basically videotapes it was a huge controversy, I believe, during the 1970s, 1980s, and a little portion of the 1990s, where music uh, movie theaters thought that their business model was doomed because of this technology. The purpose of these stories is to show you that this kind of fear and anxiety of something that is new is not new. 
So why ChatGPT? I actually got into why I liked it personally, but here are some of the reasons um, that we documented. Writers say writers saved 33% of their time using ChatGPT. It was a time saver for them. Um, many writers, especially technical writers, work in small teams. And so they just can't get to all the work that's assigned to them. In some organizations, it's like a one to 20, one to 30, one to 40 ratio between like a technical writer and the uh, software developers. ChatGPT helps technical writers that are also tasked with writing other forms of content, such as social media. If you're, this is a problem for smaller or newer startups, I should say. And this is a problem that a lot of technical writers uh, talk about in Slack, such as Write the Docs, and on Twitter, is that they are not only working, writing documentation, but they also have to write other forms of um, content. And with ChatGPT, it's a great way for you to take your documentation and repurpose it into a LinkedIn post or into a tweet. And finally, uh, ChatGPT, and this is not just for technical writers, it's for so many professionals. ChatGPT helps you with basic coding tasks and chores. So if you wanna write any bash scripts, if you wanna put up a small website, chat, and if you know a little bit of programming, ChatGPT is great. What I like about ChatGPT when it comes to programming uh, for the past like five or six years, we've been telling people that they should code, 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 code. But from my, uh, what I've seen is, yeah, you might take three or six months learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but you'll still have a hard time being able to implement that knowledge in your workplace. If you knew the basics of a programming language and chat GPT, you can actually be as effective as a junior programmer. So that is uh, another yay for ChatGPT. So when we go into like workflow, this is an example of um, a workflow of let's say you have to write a getting started guide. So we have these little time slots that we don't account for, such as drink coffee, look at cute kittens, brainstorm content, go for a walk, write outline. When you have, when you're doing all this by yourself, when you're going from create an idea to actually publish, every step you add, you're also adding the potential of distraction. And when you have dealing with all these tasks yourself, then you're just putting more distraction into your workday. If you're you, just for ch chat GPT, you don't have to do so many of these little pieces yourself. You can actually use ChatGPT to brainstorm. You can pick a topic. ChatGPT can help with the outline. You edit the outline, create a draft, get a review for the, bo review for the boss, implement corrections, and publish. So all those little distractions, you have less of them. Now, granted, in this slide, there are no distractions, so I probably realistically should have put like one or two in there, but I think you get the gist of when you have less steps, then there's less opportunity of you getting distracted. Um, I read several years ago that one distraction can actually take 15 minutes off of a task. So if you go and read a newspaper a article, if you go on social media, that's every time you do that, you potentially are taking 15 minutes out of um, working. And ChatGPT helps with the focus problem. In the future, we're going to put more emphasis on editing as opposed to, well, I shouldn't say as opposed to writing, but I should say and writing. You will have ChatGPT give you content and your magic shines in the editing process to make to just give it that polish and not everyone has that polish and so if you have experience as a content or if you content writer writing documentation this is where your 5 10 15 20 years will come in handy because chat gpt right now gives generic can give quite generic answers but you as a human can make it less generic 
So let's go over some common prompt strategies. So the prompt strategies that we'll go over today, we're gonna summarize a wall of text of instructions, uh, persona-based prompting, have, we're going to show you a technique that will reduce hallucinations. Hallucinations is when chat GPT gives you the wrong answer. And we're going to go over what does this process look overall when you're going, like how should you approach prompting? W, I don't know if I'm gonna pronounce this right. Um, this is one of those words where you see it, but you never actually say it out loud. I, think it's I guess it's W get. So back in the day, like 12 or 13 years ago for me, when I first got into tech, many of the documentation information lived in something called man pages. Man pages is when you go into the terminal and you go into the terminal, you put in the word man and then the command and it gives you all of this document, it just gives you all of this information. So what you could do if chat GPT is you can actually go into the terminal, go into the man pages and have chat GPT turn something that's like 600 words or so into a hundred words or into something that's a summary. So something like this W get, I would put into chat GPT and I would get like a, a an answer that's easier to digest. Localization and translation. There are many software projects where you have consumers and developers and contributors who live outside of English speaking countries. And if you want to be inclusive and if you want to have more of an international um, audience, localization is the way to go. Localization in the past can be a tedious process, but if you're using ChatGPT, then you are able to localize and translate text in a quicker fashion. Uh, this is an example of you. I didn't use ChatGPT for this. This is coming from the uh, view.js project. Uh, many of the users are Chinese. And I mean, this has happened for a lot of the decentralized projects. There's a lot of decentralized uh, network uh, projects where they have an audience in Korea. They have an audience in uh, China, but they just didn't have um, enough people to do the translations. So that's one use case. Transforming text into instructions. Now, the example that I have here is not based in programming. It's based on a recipe. I know for me, as a pet, it's a pet peeve to go see like a recipe of how to cook, how to make a cake, or how to, um, I don't know, make a red snapper and have this huge story. When you're using ChatGPT, you can give it the prompt to please take the text below and break it into a one, two, three sequence. So instead of reading through this wall of text, it actually makes it into a sequence for you. And this use case is relevant for tech as well. Um, especially when documentation is in its first version, you tend to have a block of text. And if you're able to tell ChatGPT to turn it into a sequence, and you're able to make it like a one, two, three, four, five, and turn it and chunk it into steps. So that's one prompt that you can use. Persona-based prompt. So the persona-based prompt, the examples that I've seen are, are fun. So you would have, for example, it's pretend that you are a pirate and please explain react to me. Or... I don't know, I'm just thinking about a celebrity and a celebrity's voice, please tell me what is the difference between React, Vue, and Express. So what I have here are different JavaScript platforms. And this is where personas really, the personas really count in these examples. So the first one is you're giving a crash course in JavaScript. Please explain the difference between React, Vue, and Express to a room of QA testers. So, keep, so this brings in the assumptions for you. So it lets you know, oh, okay. So a QA tester probably knows how to use a terminal. A QA tester probably knows um, the terminology of like what is a function and it doesn't have to repeat that and waste a QA, QA tester's time. 
Same question, different audience. Please explain the difference between React View Express to a room full of non-developers. Remember you were testifying in front of Congress. So if you're testifying in front of Congress, even though the question is the same, using ChatGPT, since it's audience aware, it'll be able to explain it in a way that someone non-technical wouldn't understand these different uh, frameworks. If you did, you could do this yourself, but if you're using the help of ChatGPT, it would remind you of nuances that you might have missed if you were just doing this uh, by uh, by yourself. Can you give more context prompt? There are many courses out there that give you a list of prompts, but what they're not telling you is prompting is a very is a, is a stacking exercise. It's an iterative ex exercise. And for here, so you have, please give me more context. So you're giving a crash course of JavaScript. Please explain the difference between Re React, Vue, and Express to a room full of non-developers, the QA testers. The fact that the QA testers want to switch careers will give you the kind of context to make the information more appropriate. So it would give them facts about these different uh, frameworks where, where they're trying to get the QA tester to, I don't know, make their own portfolio or learn skills that employers would want to know about. And that's uh, skills that employers value. And that's something that you might not necessarily have gotten with the original prompt. Prompting is very much stacking. So another example of stacking is, let's say that you are testifying in front of Congress, but you are trying to secure more government funding for open source technologies. Let's say there was, I don't know, an infrastructure bill that was that's going to be passed. So using this prompt, you're able to phrase um, this information in a way where not only will Congress understand what you're talking about with React, Vue, and Express, but you're going, this is going to give you a persuasive argument on why, what are these technologies and why they should be, uh, why should the government spend money on them or why should they be part of like an infrastructure bill? I'm using this example because I've actually had friends, uh, this was a task that they did like last year, the task of um, securing more uh, funds, sec securing more federal funds for open source projects. Check yourself prompt. So this is where we're getting into hallucination. And before I continue, I'd like to say that I got this example from an open AI tutorial. So in this question, this person is building a solar power installation and they need help with the financials. So they give you um, the financials, they give you how much uh, the materials are. And to the right, you have the student solution. In the first iteration, of this prompt, ChatGPT said, "Hey, this looks correct. This looks up. This looks like the process you would go through, but it was actually not correct." If you want to take those hallucinations, and if you want to cut down on hallucinations and get like more accurate information from ChatGPT, one strategy is for you to ask ChatGPT to show its work. So in this case, your task is to not only determine if the student's solution is correct or not, but you're asking it to work out its own solution to the problem and then compare to the student's solution. So with this format, and it says, finally, it says, decide if the student's solution is correct um, and don't say that until the problem is done. So with this format, you have the student solution, actual solution, steps to work out the solution. And when you're able to word it in this way, then ChatGPT can say, they've, ChatGPT has done the work and can compare its work with the student's work and say, well, this is wrong and have, and have some backing on if the answer is wrong or right. Once again, a theme is iteration is the process. You, a lot of times you're not gonna get the perfect prompt but knowing how to stack more information, knowing how to stack more context is how you're gonna get more success with ChatGPT. 
I would be remiss if I did not go over what are some of the limitations of ChatGPT. So when you're using ChatGPT, some of the limitations include copyright issues. They're still discussing it in court. The content can be wrong or inaccurate. We just went over a strategy where you can reduce the odds of that happening, hallucinations. Uh, potential of training, potential of training, potential of leaking confidential information. So if you have information um, that is proprietary and if you're putting it into chat GPT, then that information is open to anyone who has access to chat GPT. Finally, uh, document right is hosting a chat GPT workshop for companies. And since you have been part of the, and since you've been part of the, um, of this presentation, you get a 50% discount. The ChatGPT workshop has, uh, well, has bulk ChatGPT actions. So we're going, to, we went over some of the prompts using ChatGPT, but in the workshops, we'll actually go over how to do some simple coding exercises with ChatGPT. Or let's say that you have a whole website that you want to translate, then I, this workshop will show you how you can do that, how you can make the scripts. So um, the link is on the bottom. Thank you very much. Once again, document right. We specialize in taking documentation and making it easier to digest and solving your users and solving your reader's problem. So what I'm going to do now is gracefully look to see if there are any comments. Ah, so I am looking at the comments now. Yes, it's recorded. How does one deal with leaking company internal information with chat GPT? That is a problem. And what you can do, and this is actually a service, this is actually a product that my company is releasing very soon. You can actually create a chat GPT. You, there's two ways of going about it. So the first way I'm actually is Microsoft is rolling out chat GPT where you can use it internally. Document right. We have a product where you can use chat GPT internally and that information is not trained um, on larger chat GPT. So if you're interested, let me know. This is something that we're rolling out very soon. Yes, this was recorded. Let me see if there are other, any other questions or comments before we end. Oh, by the way, if you want a list of the different prompts, uh, sign up for the newsletter and I will send you these prompts. I'll send you a list of prompts that you can use. And I can also send you the slides. All right, I don't see any other questions. So we are going to end, it seems like exactly in 30, exactly um, in one minute, we've did this for 30 minutes. And thank you everyone for showing up. If you want to learn more about how to use ChatGPT in your company, we're actually giving workshops and classes. There's a link below and uh, have a great day. Thank you so much. And thank you for, uh, thank you for showing up. And if you have any other questions, you can also leave them in the comments below. Bye.